Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Donald Duck, no Maho, no Boshi, aka Donald Duck in the Magic Cap, for the Super Famicom, brought to us by Epoch. With Capcom still having the rights for Disney-based games on Nintendo-based consoles, Donald Duck in the Magic Cap was never released in the US, along with being a pretty late release date for the SNES. The game features Donald Duck and he's trying to buy a hat for Daisy. Amongst his journey of trying to earn money to buy this hat, he ends up running into a wizard and finds out about a magic cap that takes him to another world for him to save. At the startup screen, you can of course go and enter a password to jump to a forward level. Go into the options menu, which I assume the top option is for your difficulty. I'll be playing on the normal difficulty, but of course I'm not positive. One thing that I'm fortunate about the game is there is no fan translated version as of the recording of this. I've waited a while, I've been wanting to do this game, but unfortunately no fan translation. But of course I will still let the cutscenes play out for those who want to see them. After the opening cutscene to the game, we are then given a choice of one of four different jobs here. You have to complete two of these jobs in order to advance the game. We're going to pick the top two. The first one is, well, a postal service job. Basically, Donald becomes the paper boy. In this kind of mini game, you have to deliver 18 papers, one to each of the mailboxes, and two special ones that are located in the sky. The ones in the sky are really difficult to get to. You basically have to ride up into the air like this, time your movement correctly, and throw it into the basket of the air balloon. There are a couple of different paths, and every path that you take, you'll have to deliver the mail into the different boxes. You can keep going for as many chances as you want until time runs out, or until you're able to get one in every single one of the boxes. There's only a couple of enemies throughout here, including a dog as well as another moving car that always spawns at the same spot so you can easily know where it is so you can jump back over it. The final one we are missing here, though, is located once again up in the air. To get it, we have to launch ourselves way up once again, bounce off of the first hot air balloon, and then actually go right and hit the second one. As you can see here, I'm able to bounce off the top of this hot air balloon and deliver the 18th and final newspaper. Once it's delivered, you will get a password screen, and then you'll be back at the menu to select your next job. The one that we're going to choose is the one below it, which is window washing. This game is pretty simple as well. You'll have to jump from windowsill to windowsill, holding in the button on each of the dirty windows to clean it off. You'll have to dodge different pots and other objects being thrown down at you. You also have enemies that will be in opposite windows from one another on the left and right, and you'll usually be in the middle of this, and they'll try to throw like a ball or another object in between them trying to hit you. 
You'll notice at the top right corner of the screen is how many windows we still have yet to wash, and then on the left side, your life counter as well as your health meter, which is represented by the circle. Every time you get hit, a piece of that circle's color will disappear until it's all gone, and you end up losing that life. You can duck down underneath the baseballs being thrown by different enemies, as well as, of course, jump. Just slowly work your way up, go across each of the different levels from left to right and right to left, and hit every window along the way. While there are quite a few windows for us to clean as we're making our way up, thankfully overall, this is a pretty simple of the games. All of the opening mini-games are quite simple, but actually the Paperboy being one of the toughest of them. When you climb up here, go to the left side first, and then run over to the right side. Grab the one up top here, then drop down in order to clean this one, as we wouldn't have been able to jump over here normally. Then climb up, watching out for the plane, and cleaning the final one. And now we've begun our main journey as we're heading through this weird clock tower, working our way towards the gateway to this other magical world. Throughout this level, there's tons of different gears for us to step on, as well as lots of stuff to hang on to and swing around in order to get over. There are ghosts spread out throughout here, and the way to get rid of the ghosts is to step on the large buttons on the ground, which will cause spotlights to come on, taking out the ghosts. Jump on these rotating hangers and you'll be able to move across larger gaps. They move at short little bursts and I don't think there is a way to speed them up, but I could be wrong. You'll just have to wait for a few moments for them to eventually make it to their destiny. Be careful when making the jump here that you don't land on the spikes down below, but they thankfully give you a large turkey right afterwards to completely replenish your health in case you've lost some up to this point. The area gets a little bit tougher here. Every time you land on one of the gears, the ghost will spawn out, and your goal is to try to not step on them, but right after them is another one of the lights. You can take out them behind you or just keep on moving. Grab onto another one of these, and then grab onto the one on the edge here. Be careful not to fall down below, as you'll have to, of course, then go back to the right and climb up the ladder again. Be careful on the gear here. I suggest just jumping on it, and then slowly riding it over to the left. That way, you can avoid at least the one ghost. There's another ghost right after that, which is pretty difficult to avoid, 
Hit the final button at the end and you'll turn on the lights for the entire area and complete the level. We are now transported into the other magical realm. Here we find out that the evil wizard Pete has kind of taken over and is our goal to stop him. The first level is a really straightforward stage with lots of different pits that you can fall into. You can look at the ground and see that the ground will be slightly different colored where a pit exists and there's a lot of pits spread throughout here. There's also some other enemies that you can jump on their heads in order to defeat, but our goal is to keep on running through until we make it to the end. Once at the end, it's time for the first real boss fight of the game. This guy will appear in one of three different barrels, throwing rocks at you every time he pops out. Your goal is to jump on his head before he ends up throwing out those rocks. Every so often, instead of him popping out though, he will send spikes out. So you'll have to make sure that you're not standing directly on top of one of the barrels so that you don't get poked in the butt with them. Sometimes he'll send the spikes out several times in a row before finally actually coming back out himself. It'll take like 10 or so hits, but once he's defeated, we move on to the stage select screen. Now the game fully opens up, allowing us to choose one of four different levels in order to go to next. Once we've completed all four of the stages, we'll be going over to the final levels of the game. We're going to start off with the lower left level here. This snow level is a race against this rabbit character. Momentum is a big deal in the game, as slopes will actually cause you to run. Trying to pick up momentum is important during the course of this level. The real key though to making sure that you survive through is jumping at that left ledge there and jumping across the next one over to the right here. If you're not able to make the jump, you'll have to backtrack a little bit and climb back up as there's no way to get back up here from there. 
while climbing over these silos, just jump on top of them or use the springs. As long as you have a little bit of a lead, you should be able to even bounce on every one of the springs and still be able to win the race. Once you've completed the race though, and it's a pretty short one, we get to select another level. We're now going to move on to the top left level here. Each one of the levels here has a little bit of a different theme to it. The first one was a race, and the second one has all these different corks that shoot up when we stand on top of them. Your goal is to work your way up and find the one at the very top. Red ones will teleport you into the sky, and there's a couple of different ones of these. One here that I'm showing has a giant piece of turkey that you can pick up and replenish your health, and another one at another spot will take you up to two extra lives. As long as you're moving upwards, you know you're going in the right direction. You'll have to sometimes jump on the leaves to help you, or just keep using the corks, and once you make it up here, jump over to the left after watching out for the condor diving at you. Once you're over here, jump on this red cork and you'll be blasted off into the boss fight for the level. This lion, when you walk towards him and jump right when he's about to swing, you'll knock the hammer out of his hand. Then you can keep jumping on his head as many times until he picks the hammer back up. And if you time your jumps just right, you'll be able to hit him over and over again before he picks up the hammer. Timing it exactly right, you'll be able to prevent him from even being able to pick the hammer back up. If he does pick it back up, he'll try to swing it at you, so jump at him when he's just swinging to knock it out of his hand again. We now have two levels left to select from, and we're going to start with the one on the upper right, the Crystal Caves. Now this one is a maze-like level, probably the most confusing of the stages. When we start off, we're going to hit this little button so that we send out the ledge so that we can work our way up here. Now, I'm not sure if there's a more direct path than the one I'm taking, but this is the path that I've learned to take in order to get through the stage. There are a few enemies in this level, including also giant boulders that will roll past. Your goal is to find the mirrors and teleport to different areas of the stage. Sometimes having to defeat an enemy on top of a mirror in order to use it, like here. Over here, run through the length of the wall and then climb up the ladder, once again running through another wall over to the left. Here you'll find a launcher, jump on the edge of it, and then get yourself sprung up to the top. Run over to the right, and hit the button on the far right here in order to drop this mirror. In the next section, climb up the ladder immediately, watching out for the boulder that was rolling towards you, take out another skeleton enemy, and then go through the mirror. You'll fall down here, what you want to do is go to the left, then rush down the hill using the momentum of the hill slope to send you crashing into the wall. By doing so, you'll drop the next mirror. When you drop down here, hit the button on the far right which will cause the platforms to rotate, dropping the next mirror. In the next room, jump on this guy, but you don't have to worry, that's not the mirror that we take. Instead, bounce on another one of the two launchers to fly up into the ceiling, causing, well, another mirror to fall. Now it's time for the boss battle of the stage. This is the most unique boss of the game. You have this ghost that actually moves with you. He goes left and right, following your exact movements. You'll have to learn how to manipulate this so that you can get him hit by the different rocks that are falling from the ceiling. Of course, while also trying to dodge them yourself. You can switch sides with him at any time by jumping over him, and whatever way you find it best to try to maneuver around, sometimes being very difficult not to take at least one hit before you're able to do some more damage to him. Once you're able to deliver enough hits though, he's defeated, and we move on to the next stage. The next level of the game is definitely interesting, as the ground will actually rotate depending upon where you're standing on it. If you're on a straight normal platform, it's fine, but once you hit a slope, the screen will actually rotate. This takes a lot to get used to. It can be a little disorienting at times, definitely. 
Our first goal of the level is to rotate it to this point and then jump on top of this tree stump, causing the barrier to the left of the tree below us to disappear. Now our goal is to start heading back to the left. Now I'm going to make a mistake in the level and end up jumping over to a platform I'm not supposed to, and because of that, I'm going to have to end up redoing a portion of the stage. But thankfully it doesn't take too long to redo that. Watch out for the bees as well as the caterpillar enemies, but by far the worst enemies in this stage is those thorny little green plants. They blend in, they're difficult to jump over because of the way the jumping kind of works with the momentum, and of course, uh, the rotating of the screen itself will cause you to accidentally run into them. After going through this wall, there's a bunch of the little thorny plants, so be very careful of them. Watch out for the bee if you can. Grab the health located here, and then once you jump over a couple of more plants, you'll then want to jump up on top of here. Now, when you work over to the right, I end up going to the left here, and you don't want to do that. You actually want to keep going to the right. And because of this mistake, I have to fall through the ground here and kind of re-rotate the screen and go back to that area we just were at a few seconds ago with the thorny plants all in a row and the, the bee that hit us. A little bit annoying that I made that mistake, but thankfully, like I said, as you can see, not too much of the level has to be redone. But that's a common mistake that I found myself consistently doing by accident. Now, when we're up here this time, we're not going to go over to the left when we rotate here. Instead of just keep moving to the right. Make the jump over to the right here. Keep moving the screen a little bit more and you'll enter the teleporter, which will take you to the boss fight for the level. Now, this is a pretty interesting boss as it's on a giant rotating circle below you. You have to move it by going left or right, and while you do so, eventually you'll come to the giant head of the creature itself. Sometimes you'll be able to jump on him multiple times by slowing yourself up a little bit. You're also going to have to dodge bees the whole time by jumping on them or just flat out avoiding them. Sometimes it's best to bait the bee into coming towards you and then continuing over to the left. Here, with the right timing, I'm able to jump on the boss's head a couple of times in a row. After four hits, he'll shrink in size, making it harder to do consistent hits in a row. Thankfully, also, though, the area that you have to run around, though, is also smaller because, of course, of it shrinking. It'll take another several hits in order to once again shrink him in size, making the area even smaller to deal with, but once again, also very much smaller for you to run around. If you move around the boss pretty quickly, you won't have too many times that you'll have to actually contend with the bees. After delivering only a couple of more hits to him though, the boss will be defeated and we move on to the final levels of the game. The first of the final set of levels has us moving through an auto-scrolling level, through clouds as well as different flying platforms, and blimps that we can stand on top of in order to maneuver through. There are clouds that will end up pushing you backwards, and these are the most annoying enemies throughout this area, as they will cause you to fall on your backside, causing a long delay before you're able to get back on and keep moving. You can see here's an example of me getting knocked back by the wind, which will not only do damage, but like I said, delay you getting back up, and because of this, may cause you to miss time an upcoming jump, or be knocked off a platform altogether. The screen will darken a bit once we get farther in, including also a small pause as the music will change to much more ominous music. We'll now have to avoid lightning clouds that are flashing in the background as we're making our way across the very small cloud platforms.
Eventually, we'll make it on top of the giant blimp again. You'll see an enemy down below. Just ignore that as it's slowly moving down. Eventually, the blimp will come to a resting spot. You can run to the far right side here and complete the stage. It's now time for the final level of the game. It's a pretty lengthy level broken up into several different parts. There's a lot of pits to fall into during the opening segment, as well as several enemies, wolves and pig guys. The little small platforms will fall down below once you've stood on them for a few seconds, so be very careful of them, especially the ones over open pits. In the second segment of the stage though, you'll have multiple different colored platforms. When standing on a colored platform, you'll get teleported to the opposite side of the screen onto the same colored platform. You'll have to use this to manipulate your way upwards while trying to avoid a few of the enemies that are in this stage. Not too challenging of an area, but a pretty interesting one nonetheless. After completing that area though, it'll be time for the first boss fight here. This juggling guy in the ball will roll back and forth, every so often stopping to throw a ball at you. He has some different momentum that will sometimes cause him to be able to push himself up on top of the staircases where you're standing and be able to run into you and of course you'll want to jump and avoid him by either jumping completely over him to the opposite side or by just jumping straight up into the air with a perfectly timed jump. Just be sure if you do decide to jump over him to avoid it, that you quickly hold the run button and run to that opposite side fast. His pattern doesn't really change up at all, just sometimes the timing can be a little bit different, but for a boss, he's a pretty simple one. Once you deliver enough hits though, we continue on in the castle. The next area of the stage is another one of the other scrolling type places, with a giant monster mouth closing in on you trying to crush you in its teeth. You're of course not going to want to get crushed, and standing in between the gaps in his teeth will allow you not to be. However, when the mouth opens back up, it causes different parts of the platform to be pulled along with it, and because of this making the next upcoming jumps after he pulls apart pretty difficult. There are some jumping fish enemies throughout here to avoid as well as a couple of the wolf enemies that we saw earlier on in the stage. Take out this wolf enemy here by jumping on him a couple of times, grab the health thankfully here, and get ready to go through another one, the mouth segments. Make it to the right side on this platform before he starts closing back up, and then of course continue on. Thankfully you can make it all the way to the next solid platform before he ends up closing up again. Wait for the mouth to open up once again, and then one more gap in between the teeth before we're finally done this area. After the segment, it's time for another boss fight. Now this boxing kangaroo-like enemy, you'll have to wait for him to punch at you in order to jump on his head. If you try to jump on his head when he's not doing a punch, he'll just block his head using his boxing gloves like this. To manipulate him to try to consistently do punches at you, stand in front of him, back away from him, and then try to go right back forward to him. 
kind of weird, I know, but kind of going back and forth, left and right, will sometimes cause him to go ahead and try to actually punch you. Sometimes he'll also bounce around the room, and after a little bit of doing this, he'll stop, in which case, you can try to get him to punch again so you can jump on his head and finish him off. We're now into the final segments of the level before the final boss. The next segment is a pretty large area that has wind that you'll have to manipulate. The wind itself will be pushing you towards the left side, so you'll have to time your jumps accordingly so you don't accidentally fall down into the giant pit below. There's plenty of platforms and plenty of stuff to swing off of in order to have some fun using the momentum of the wind depending upon what direction the wind is going at that moment. You can look at all the little particles in the background to get a good idea of when that momentum will switch on you. If you climb all the way to the very top here though, you can grab an extra life before going through the open door on the far right. And now the final boss fights begin. This first battle against the evil wizard Pete, you'll have to of course jump on his head. And to do so, you'll have to watch out for different projectiles. He has three. Usually two yellow ones will come out at a time, as well as a blue one which can destroy the platforms you're standing on. Once all the platforms are destroyed, you'll have to bounce on the magic cap itself at the bottom in order to spring yourself upwards in order to land on top of his head. Manipulating in between the different projectiles, especially when he has two or three of the yellow ones out at one time, can be a little bit difficult, but with the screen scrolling down due to too many objects on screen, this will actually help you manipulate your movements a little bit. For the final boss fight of the game is a giant wizard Pete in the background. Use his hands to then go back and forth, jumping on his head every single time. If you time your jumps correctly, as he'll shoot out a projectile that will then chase you around the room, you can just keep hitting him over and over again. Every so often, he'll use his hands to punch the wall in order to cause blocks to fall down. However, if you do those jumps correctly, you can just stand on top of the hands and never fall back down to the ground and have to get back up. Once you deliver enough hits though, you can sit back and enjoy the ending to Donald Duck in a Magic Cap.
So there you have it, Donald Duck no Maho no Boshi. And I know I'm pronouncing it wrong. You don't have to correct me in the comments. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, as I'm not fluent in Japanese, even after a couple of semesters of Japanese in college. Donald Duck in the Magic Cap, though, is a very fun platformer. It has some great animations, and I love the sound design. The music and the sound effects of every time you complete a stage in particular, it's just some of my favorite level complete music, even on the SNES in general. There's something always fun about the Donald Duck games, and there's actually a ton of Donald Duck games that have been made by various different companies. Donald Duck seems to be a great character for these action platform style games. His attitude and everything else just lends perfectly to a fun character that you enjoy playing as. While no direct sequels from Epoch were made for Donald Duck, there are Donald Duck games in general, whether it's on the Sega Genesis or Master System, PlayStation, GameCube, N64. There are several great Donald Duck games to play. 3D platformers, 2D platformers, of all different types and varying storylines and different atmospheres. Unfortunately, due to it being released late in the SNES's lifetime, as well as the license issues with Capcom and Disney licensing in the US, it's unfortunately that this game wasn't brought over to the North American or even European markets. If it had been, it definitely would have been another one of my favorite platforms that I always loved the Magical Quest games, loved playing as Donald Duck and Quackshot, as well as World of Illusion, so I definitely would have enjoyed this one back in the day as well. After the presented by Epoch screen, you get one last screen of Donald Duck with the end written next to it. And with that, that will wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.